I do apologise in advance for the fact that this session recap is just going to be me being fairly miserable. Um, the past two sessions have not been kind to me. Um, session 20 was no fault of the group, the DM, or anything like that, or the, the adventure. I was just done well. Uh, although I did have my partner with me, so that made things infinitely better. Uh, unfortunately, my note-taking ability wasn't all that great because of my illness at the time. Uh, so... Uh, we'll go on from there. Uh, but yeah, um, yeah, we'll, we'll talk about Session 21 very soon. So, uh, Group 89 decided to leave the old, old Al well with Sister Gorel, um to go to Conneyberry and speak to Agatha the Banshee, uh, which we didn't really know a whole lot about, other than they are typically elven uh, spirits who um, uh, uh, are quite vengeful, almost. They're very resentful of the living, especially the living elves. That's why Sister Gorel decided to stay back. Um, and um, we um, we were reminded that we could ask her one question, uh, having offered her the gift of uh, the silver comb. Um, and we start to ask the question. So, Ito states, and this is very important now, he states that he wants the Tome of Bowgentle. And the DM and Agatha weren't going to fall for this ruse. It has to be a question. And she looks at him, hovering, waiting, going, and? Uh, and my darling Larissa, she asks, uh, is, it, is it the Book of Shadows from Charmed? Uh, I haven't watched Charmed yet, I really must. Um, but yeah, so Ellie asks about the Dread Tyrant. Um, now, the way our DM roleplayed Agatha is incredible. Uh, very, like, very cold. Uh, very cold, very icy. Um... And, as well, giving no personal space. Like, she grabs people's arms, she's stroking the cheek, all this kind of stuff. Gets really up in their face. Um, and I and I very much like that. I think, I think invading personal space is almost like, like... Like, a character's personal space is almost like, actually, like... Makes the character sort of feel closer to the player. Like, physically closer to the player. Um... It's like when I was playing uh, Wurzak the Great and Green um, in, uh, in a one-shot, uh, which will actually be mentioned later on, I think. Um, uh, like, he actually gets right up in people's faces and wants to know what they're doing. He has no semblance of personal space. So I like that. I, I think that works quite well. Um, so Dread Tyrant had actually come to Agatha and had got no answer. Uh, he asked for a name, a mage's tower, looking for a book. Um, uh, she con she consults a crystal ball. Uh, if they're successful, their plan comes to fruition. Uh, a terrifying beast they have with them. And then just tells us to be gone. Um, so... Eliza asks if she can comb the, the Banshee's hair. No response. Um, we return to Sister Gorel, I believe. I'm pretty sure there was a name mentioned, but I haven't written it down. Uh, so there might have been a necromancer mentioned or something like that. Um, Eliza would like to offer Agatha of her earrings with an 18 persuasion but doesn't see Agatha she's gone um, she tells of Vo gentle spell but she doesn't have it and Eliza upon being asked uh, ask, upon asking if she can ask some more questions uh, the banshee yells no and frightens her with a wisdom save of four uh, wisdom saves do not treat Eliza very well uh, as we find out in session 21 I'm not going to go over all the notes in that it's uh, too long a combat. It's too long a session. It was like five hours long. Um, so we've not been to this mage's tower. Um, so we'd consider our next move. Um, 
Wyventor, uh, I suggest kick the snot out of the orcs and see what they know. And uh, Yito's player, the DM for the one shot where Wurzak the Great and Green. I'm not going to stop doing it. I'm not. I'm sorry. No, it's like the Black Country accent. I, I need to do it. It's that that's that's. I have to. I have to. Okay. I don't do it enough. Um, you see, it's just worse. I approves. Um, so something about this is mentioned. Uh, Cernoff the Necromancer from Eltnar, capital of Thay. Um, allies with Ito to discover the place. Um, they know like power and magic, enemies of the Sword Coast, Cold War sort of vibes. Okay. Um, so we take a break and. We then start going to the old uh, towards the old Al well to get to um, to get to the uh, to get the Wyvern top. I mean, this is smoke, like it's just a pillar of smoke rising. So um, our stealthy players and familiar Lionel um, go ahead and investigate, uh, and they find that there is um, what was there now? It was uh, yeah, a load of stuff stuck. Yeah, that's right, yeah, so it's all like the supplies, all the crates and furniture and whatnot, just piled up into one big thing, just burnt. And atop it was a flag, uh, which belonged to the Tribe of the Many Arrows, uh, which... Uh, I can't remember... Uh, Ellie. Ellie recognises. Uh, and it also has as well the, the symbol of Groomsh. Groomsh. Uh, the one-eyed orc god. Um... Uh, who I think is actually like Chaotic Evil as well. Uh, he's part of the Orc Pantheon, anyway. he's like the head of the Orc Pantheon. So, there's tracks that are heading towards the mountains, um, and... Um, and we're thinking that these these tracks may actually end up leading into Phandalin. If we can get rid of the Orcs before they plan to move to the uh, over the mountains to Phandalin, we might actually save the town before they know they've been saved. We'll have to see. Um, so, Eliza, providing one of the best quotes that I've heard in the entire game, is, uh, I don't like being frightened, so now I want to kill. And <laughs> I think we all just agree that's a, like, a pretty good life philosophy. Um... So... I think that's actually all the notes I wrote down for that session. But yeah, basically. So we arrive at Wyventor, just like the foot of Wyventor, and it's getting close to dark now. Uh, it's about 7 p.m., like, like, sort of like 5, 6, 7 p.m., somewhere in the afternoon, late afternoon, early evening. And um, there's a single orc sentry that just gets sniped immediately by Ellie and Eliza. Um, another orc comes out for a sick break and uh, also gets just killed. However, this the bodies are now piling up, these two bodies. And we start to make preparations for the mouth of this cave that the orcs are in. And um, uh, they're yelling and shouting, barking commands, ready to make, um, basically make our lives hell, and indeed they do. Um, and that's when uh, we roll initiative for the next session. So now we're into session 21. So our uh, pre-combat preparations were things like Yito is going to create a, a cube of slow. Um, I would like have a mold earth, create bonfire, just to try and slow things down. Eliza's got her echo up, and uh, I think Ellie's like actually redoing like a crossbow, hiding in the shadows to try and get some advantage on her attacks and sneak attack. Um, so Yito as well is also trying to retreat uh, um, from the from the action, uh, so not to get himself killed because he is quite squishy. He's still a wizard, however powerful he is. Um, I, f I do forget that, you know, just because they have a D6 round and a D4 of hit die um, and have cantrips doesn't make them any less... Doesn't, sorry, it doesn't make them that much stronger. 
Um, so yeah, so now the orcs uh, sort of like bellowing out orders and and in trying to, um, I guess, like motivate each other to sort of get out the cave and deal with the intruders. Uh, only Yito really understands this, and even then, sometimes he's a bit too far away to fully understand. Um, things get pretty hot and heavy, um, and we think we've got the situation under control. Like, there's a certain line that they're not able to get past because of like myself, Ellie, and Eliza. We're just holding this line as best we can uh, to ensure that nothing's getting through. Um, but unfortunately, they have such a line breaker within their ranks um, with an ogre. Shouting, hock, knock, hock, knock, hock, knock. Just constantly charging out. And he doesn't care for his troops. And I, I have to give idea this that, that, like, for the most part, hock, knock is role played spectacularly well. Um, in that, like, he doesn't care about um, about his, his, his orc fellows. So he's just going to charge straight through them and try and reach Eliza. Even though he's got, like, two orcs in front of him. Um. Yeah, he dashes through the fire, the crate bonfire, again, not caring. And he takes seven damage on a zero deck save. Um, I don't want to get too much into the rolls. I'm already far too, too far gone for that. Um, and yeah, and uh, there's also an orc as well staying in the mouth of the cavern entrance who's, uh, who's sort of taking his time surveying the battlefield, getting a feel for things. Um... And he's a mystic, and he's very carefully casting things like Bane and, um, what was it, Bane and, um, uh, like, Shield of Faith, and Toll the Dead, like, he's, he's, he's got quite the arsenal, and our DM pulled no punches with him. Um, yeah, he, he was, he was quite strong. Um... Uh, there's other orcs as well, so it's not just like just typical orcs. You've got orcs that are like, um, um, like there's the orc. So the mystic was the orc hand, but then you had an orc claw who has like these samurai claws, uh, like ninja claws rather, uh, like like I guess like Wolverine claws. Whatever. Like I really like these. Like I've, I think they're, I don't think they're Uchichangas, something like that. I don't know what they are. Um, but yeah, they're like these quite nice claw blades. I really want to use my Elden Ring, but I don't think they're really powerful enough to do a significant amount of damage. Uh, which is a shame, because I quite like them. Um, so... Uh, th who else is there? There's, uh, there's Brugor Axebiter, the chief, who has this uh, like plus one battle axe um, that can also do a fair... not just do damage, but also like uh, given temporary hit points and things like that, like this is something I've just looted. Um, yeah, so it's a plus one, um, and your hit point maximum increases for each by one for each level you have attained. And when you roll a critical attack hit to att with an attack, um, you gain the same amount of weapon damage dealt as temporary hit points. This effect lasts until the combat ends. So. That's uh, with the way our DM was rolling, um, yeah, yeah. Th they they were gonna they were gonna get a lot of hit, temporary hit points. Um, and I don't I, mean, I don't know if temporary hit points stack. Does it say on the weapon? Uh, no, I don't think temporary hit points stack. So, but anyway, yeah. So like our DM rolled like eleven critical hits, and I think. In total, like five critical fails, and three of them were from our players. Yeah, in the same round, I'm reading here, there were like. Um, yeah, there are three natural 20s. Natural 20, natural 20 to hit me, natural 20 to hit Eliza, uh, natural 20 save against my Toll the Dead against them. In one round of combat. So that would, but I, I, I see, I might be a sore loser, but I will be, but I will, but I will be fair and say like, you know what, that's dice, I, and I, and I'm starting to appreciate rolling in the open. I didn't think that if I were a DM, I would do that. No, I appreciate rolling in the open, and I don't appreciate fudging anymore. It's like I, if I'm gonna die, 
I want, you know, do it. You know, if, if, if you're going to do something that's going to kill my character, just do it. You know, because it doesn't, because I'd rather that than, and, and yeah, I'll be annoyed because I'm heavily emotionally invested in my characters. Um, but I want a fair game. I don't want to feel cheated. I don't want to be, uh, like, get a participation trophy, you know, that sort of thing. So, that's like my first complaint with the the session, um, with this session, that um, there is a time when Eliza goes down, I'm surrounded, and I think, yeah, I think it's actually just myself and Eliza that go down, and like that, besides Ellie, we've all now gone down, uh, you know, including our old member Shoria. Um, of the wild geese, yeah. Um, we've all sort of gone down at least once now, um, and and Professor Yito, uh, but his play has also gone down um, as a meal. And it was tough. It was tough going, um, especially. Well, I think we would have been able to handle this fight had it not been for like things like the legendary actions and lair actions that like the the, the war chief was getting and the ogre was getting. So the ogre could do things like whip his chain around a tree and try to pull it down and pull it around us, or you know, um, or I don't know, maybe even wield it as a melee weapon, like in uh, Lord of the Rings: ba Battle for Middle Earth Two. If you've not played that, it's a fantastic RTS. It's one of the better ones. Um, yeah, it's where I get. Oh, of course, sales where did I come from? You know, I love that. Um, but um, yeah, so this ogre could. Like do all sorts of like, like like sort of like throw chains over people and like lure rocks to hit people in the back or like slash them in the back. Uh, it had reach. It was a reach weapon. And considering that he's an ogre as well, so he's like a large creature. Um, yeah, he, he was gonna do a fair amount. Um, So there was that, and then like like Brug or X Spider could th do things like trigger an attack that wouldn't consume in a reaction from every orc on his turn. Um, he could give them temporary hit points, I think, and things like that. We'd, I wasn't exactly sure of the effects, but he could do a lot of stuff that would bolster his forces, um, and indeed even like frighten characters. And it was a lot. It it was a lot. And I've come to appreciate that I'm not going to underestimate. I'm not going to underestimate a uh, uh, DM. And I, this isn't really like a complaint as such. I'm actually quite glad because I, I I love a combat, and this was a really tough combat. But it was, it's a fine line between tough and exhausting. Where it's like you know, it's like I just look. If you just kill my character, I don't have to think anymore. You know, or like, mm, you know. It, can you throw us a bone here or something like that, you know? Um, but yeah, um, but I, I, sort of, I was torn, but the conclusion I reached at the end of this is like, no, don't pull any punches. If if someone dies, they die, you know? Like, look, I've got a revive if I scroll. That's, that, that's really all I can do. Um, and yeah, I, like, we used up all our spell slots. Like, like, the first thing we did was we went through our level 3 and level 2 spell slots, which I had to kind of reserve. Um, and just because it's a third level spell slot doesn't mean it's going to work. It doesn't mean it's going to work out the way you want it to. So there was that. Um, but yeah, so to my first complaint, um, yeah, so Eliza had gone down and like I was surrounded by orcs, and this ogre that I had commanded to flee successfully uh, returned, and I was disappointed that it didn't go after me. Sometimes it's too crowded here, or some bigot wants to fight. Uh, not, and I'm not saying this is like as Garveld, who you know, you know, Death Priest, ha ha, you know, Death Wish, whatnot. No, I'm saying this is like, if I were, if I were in your shoes, I'd be going after the character that's down. Um, and I think the reason why this rubbed me a bit raw was from the one shot uh, that we did last week that is going to be resuming tonight. Um, the the DM again pulled punches, and other player, uh, other players in the party assisted as well. If you hit him, he's going to take two automatic death saves. I'm like, yeah, that's that's the rules. That's D&D. &D. You know, it's, it's, it's hard enough to die in D&D &D as is. 
Um, you know, and don't get me wrong, I love this character that I cooked up in a couple of hours. Um, but if he's if he's got to go, then that's D and D, you know. And I'm not so, and I'm not as bitter about it. Um, um, you know, I, 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 I hate character death, but. I appreciate that it it's fair and I believe that my DMs are fair and I, and I don't want the fudging in my favour um, I don't have the patience for it anymore. And, I, and I used to think that if I was a DM I'd have fudge rolls now no, I don't have the patience for it my next complaint however came from um, my next and final complaint I should say came from um, uh, whenever it was my turn um, let me have a look. Because I, I made a note of this. Um, one, two. I think I put about like three times my term was interrupted. So stack the fridge and stoke the bomb, we're staying home tonight. Now I had gone, and these interruptions, it's not just a, main, a minor inconvenience, it's an active roadblock to roleplay for me. Because... At the beginning of combat, like when I was setting up like my sort of kill zone, so to speak, for the entrance of the cave, I was saying I um, uh, I create a moat of fire within the palm of my hand. I crush my hands together, pull down and close my eyes and think of the fire burning where I want it to, or fueled by the rage that these orcs have caused me. The thought of Vandalin burning to their hand again. And then I summon the favoured blade of Kilimvor in the throat of the cave and proceed to strike at any of the orcs that would appear. I'd gone from that to I'll move my spiritual weapon there plus six misses I'll move create bonfire dex 13 save please DM seven damage end my turn. Stack the freaking smoke the bomb this day and home tonight I'm a lover not a fighter and I'm rather f Things are going well um, towards the end. Uh, I chase after the mystic inside the cave, deal with one of his bodyguards. Uh, the mystic um, is the final kill of the battle, and he asks in common for a quick death, be shown mercy, and I grant it without hes hesitation. I'm just fed up at this point. I, it, were I in a better mood, I would have probably actually allowed him to say some prayers, even maybe get off a, a last spell. You know? Or even let him find another tribe to join. Or found, or whatever. But I was fed up at this point. Uh, Eliza got the final kill on the, uh, the chief. Um, slamming the, uh, the chief with a rapier by the throat uh, into the wall, sticking him there, her original. Uh, and then proceeding to just stab him. He was a remaining... Uh, um, actions, extra attacks, and unleashing Khan and whatnot to just continue to stick him. And Ito as well, um, cast a thing like Ray of Entropy, it's like Ray of Frost, I think, or something to destroy. Um, I know, localized singularity, which is Ice Knife, to kill the ogre, even at disadvantage. Um, with 10 hit points, which is exactly what he needs. And, I, and, I've, and I'm not just proud for Yito, I'm proud for Yito's player for finally being able to actually hit something, and at disadvantage as well, and just kill it. Because uh, he's never had a look with digital dice. Like he, he always says like when he rolls as a DM, he rolls incredibly well, and he does. When he rolls as a player, he rolls pretty badly. So combat's over. Uh, I would like to talk more about it, I really would, but I'm not in any condition to do so. Um, Eliza takes the orc claws claws, uh, Yito inspects the chief's battle axe. Uh, it's made from bone and sharpened iron, uh, and the image is taken from the Elder Scrolls V Skyrim. Um, not much on the bodies really, uh, the simpler groom she's found on the mystic, which I allow the mystic to keep and bury him with it. Uh, the other orc bodies I will burn. Um, uh, in the caves, 
southeast of the most room we find bed rolls, a weapon rack likely stolen, and with a lot of the weapons in pristine conditions. Uh, three battle axes and two great axes, so we're probably going to sell those. Um, Ellie rolls um, 15 to investigate a chest uh, to find traps, finding none whatsoever. Uh, with Mage she opens it, staying 30 feet away, revealing coins filled to the top, 180 gold pieces and 750 silver pieces. Uh, in a small bag there are three vials of perfume, uh, which at first we don't quite recognise, uh, it's just like transparent fluid. Um, valued about 10 gold pieces a pop. And there's also a sheathed blade, um, which the mage hand picks up, in case it explodes. The DM says, it does not explode. Um, it's got a slight curve to it, and the hilt and handle are intricately designed. Um, Single-sided sharpened blade, gold interwoven into the uh, unsharpened side, making its way to the top. I do believe this is actually official D&D artwork. Um, but it looks like the uh, elven dagger from at least still scrolls for oblivion. Um, except that would, that would like entirely gold. Um, yeah, it's quite nice. I don't know what it does. Uh, I didn't quite manage to catch that, so I, um, I'm sure one of the players of the DM can uh, um, tell me that. Um, in the room with the uh, where the ogre was originally spawned, because I saw that through my spiritual weapon, which I wasn't supposed to see, uh, there's a ball roasting. Um, somewhat burnt given the time that we've been uh, out in combat and Lionel will turn the spit that the, that the boar is on um, there's mostly provisions labelled rum uh, like a barrel labelled rum uh, featuring a tap, Eliza takes a few swigs of that, there's a bucket of water cooking utensils um, and yeah, so we're thinking like we're gonna we're gonna use the cooking utensils to make something nice, sorted rations perhaps uh, Sister Grell should have been there with the DM for God. Uh, she could have healed. Oh well. Uh, she sees Garval burn the bodies and assuming assumes things went well. Um, I didn't say this out loud again. Wasn't in the mood, but I said like he's looking at her dead on, as if she just as if she walks in the cave like you like you gotta be joking, like you were there the whole time. Eliza slumps down like just exhausted. Um, the sun's setting. It's about seven p.m. and uh, Ellie checks the roast ball for poison. And even with low rolls, like 8 and 11 for investigation, uh, she finds no poison. Uh, the orcs are not poison their own food in case of attack. Um, um, so we take the time to inspect the items that we looted. Um, Eliza takes the ruby, having been prompted, uh, and it is revealed to be a ruby of the war mage, uh, which Ellie takes as it's useful. So the ruby of the war mage is basically... Um, it turns your weapon into a spellcasting focus, um, which would be quite useful for me because I could then lose the shield, but it doesn't have my symbol of Kelimvor on it, so I wouldn't use it. Uh, so Ellie, but Ellie can use it so that she doesn't have to fumble with a component pouch and all this other stuff, so she can have a rapier and a crossbow and do sort of two attacks at once and have a magic and whatnot. So that's pretty cool. Um, interestingly enough, like the ruby attaches itself to the weapon after ten minutes, but it can't be removed unless you detach it as an action or the weapon is destroyed. Not even an anti-magic field causes it to fall off. The ruby does not fall off the weapon if your excuse me uh, if the your attunement to the ruby ends. How interesting. Um, yeah, I didn't find out what the dagger did, so I'll have to see if I can find that. And uh, yeah, so the battle axe of Brugar uh, Axe Biter uh, was Soul Reaver. Uh, not the game, um, but I'm unsure if it's cursed. Uh, so I'm holding on to my own accursed Warhammer for the time being. Um, it's a curse that I am, that Garvel's at least familiar with. It being underdung in steel. Or underdung in bronze. Brass. Whatever. So, that's the end of the session. I do apologise for just moaning this entire time, but uh, I need to get off my chest. Um, the next sessions are probably going to be a lot calmer. We may go to Vandalin. 
offload some of the loot, perhaps give it to the militia, um, buy some stuff, go to Neverwinter, some things have been planned there. Um, and yeah, hopefully I could sort of make up for the roleplay um, in that session. I'd very much like to do that. Um, so yeah, we'll see how that goes. So thank you so much for watching. Do take care. And I, I again, I really do apologise for being miserable this episode. I, um, I'm knackered because it actually kept me up that last night. That uh, Some of the things that bothered me about that session. Um, I said heartburn. Don't know why that's coming back. So yeah, um, thank you very much for watching. Take care. Stay for now. We don't need no people around for us to have some fun. To me.